Greetings everybody, Ignacio here, and welcome back to another Gaming's Pick It Up video. And today is 2018, and this marks my very first video for this year. And I'm pretty darn excited for this 2018, just um, what life has to come in store for me. But I wish I could make a video to talk about right now. Uh, I thought about telling you guys what's been going on with me, but I think it will be just a waste of time because of course you guys are here for the Gaming Picks Up video. But if you want to know what's been going on, I will make a video sometime this week um, talking about what's what's up with me and stuff like that and and maybe catch up a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So sorry, there's a lot of things I kind of want to say in this video, but of course I can't say a lot of things because I have to get to this gaming pickups video. But one thing I do want to talk about real quick is I got recently a shout out from one of my favorite YouTubers, and I'm not saying that because he gave me a shout out. I mean, he is one of my favorite like people to watch, and his name is BioPhoenix, and I'll probably put his name right here and a link down to his channel. But he recently gave me a shout out, and I just want to say thank you, BioPhoenix. Um, you really did not mean to give me a shout out. Um, I don't know. It's just because my channel. I don't feel like it's like. I don't know, professional, I just don't think it really cares. I mean, I, I try not to be professional in my videos that much just because I'm just a normal guy. But yes, um, BioPhoenix, uh, thank you if you're watching this video. Um, it's really appreciated because I do like your channel a lot. Um, but yeah, though, I think that's basically it. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this, BioPhoenix, sorry, it's just I haven't done a video in some time and I'm a little rusty right now. And so that being said, Let's start off with my gaming pickup video. Um, I do want to say is that I don't have that much to show just because um, I've been working quite a bit and and this coming week, I'm, my schedule is really weird this entire weekend, I believe. And just because of my weird schedule, I'm having not too much time playing video games. Plus I've been playing a lot of games from the past that I haven't played that much. But that being said, let's just get started with this. So we're going to start with the first, um, my biggest, probably my more expensive item on this list. And that is a Super NES Mini. Of course, this came out like some time ago. And and uh, I got this somewhere around like la my last video that I made. But like I think like two weeks later, uh, my cousin was able to, uh, my, well, my cousin works at Target. And she was able to get one for me. Um, I've been telling her to get me one for some time, whatever she could get the chance to, and I'll pay her back later. And she was able to buy me a Super NES, um, very easy to get from her, and I am happy to have one of these. Uh, I I never cared about the uh, the last year's um, the original NES Mini because I don't know. I never cared too much about the eight bit era of gaming that much i mean of course it's a classic a classic time but i never got my hands around to getting one because a lot of the games on there didn't seem interesting but yada yada, yada. but this one the 16-bit this was something i was morally looking forward to because i always found the 16-bit era more interesting um graphically and gameplay wise i guess you could say but of course um um, I haven't played a lot, a lot of this, surprisingly enough. I was hoping to play a bunch of these games on here, but I only played three games. Um, of course, w one of them being Super Mario World. Um, I've beaten that on here as my first go-to game. Um, I played a bit of Secret of Mana on here. I think I'm halfway through the game, but I'm really stuck on one part. And I also got to play um, Donkey Kong, which, oh my god... What a hard game. I, I played Donkey Kong on the Game Boy Advance, and I, I swear this version is harder. And as a matter of fact, I think the whole collection is a lot harder than from what I remembered. But then again, I but then again, I haven't played like the Super NES in such a long time. I never had one as a kid, mind you, but I definitely borrowed it at some point in my life, and I thought it was really cool. But yeah, there's not too much to say about this. I mean, of course, you if you know what a Super NES, it's no no different here so we're gonna start with my only vita game on this list and that is kill zones mercenaries of course if you have a vita you know that this game is great it's seriously whenever i see like a video a vita collection video it's always um kill zone mercenaries is usually always on their collection list um uh, of course, I'm a big first-person shooting fan, so this was a game I had to get at some point. I wanted to get this game day one when I got my Vita, 
but but this game was really expensive and I I paid 25 bucks for for a used copy and to prove it I has this stupid white thing and it makes me mad and I'm trying I know there is I think there are ways to get rid of this crap but I haven't found the solution yet I mean I try not to pull it because I don't want to damage the I don't know the box on the back of this thing well anyways um, what I mean what is there too much to say I mean it's a first-person shooting game I never played any of the kill zone games so this is technically my first one but um, after playing this game I thought it was pretty darn um, good um, it made me want to try out the other ones in some degree now after playing this one um, I think I really only like this game for morally just the multiplayer. I mean, the single player was pretty decent. Um, story wasn't amazing or anything, but the multiplayer, I think, is where this game is at. And it's funny because the only thing I could say about the multiplayer was that I think my it's... next um, game on here, and that is going to be a Wii game, and that is called Super Paper Mario. Now, I'll be straight up honest with you guys. I am not the biggest like Paper Mario fan out there and I really want to because I really like the art design for the the Paper Mario series but I just can never get into them I mean I have the thousand euro door on the GameCube and I just really can't get into it I mean of course if you know anything about me I'm not the biggest RPG fan out there and so it's really hard to, for me to get into them but what's interesting about this is that this is technically really not an RPG it has RPG elements it's more of an action Paper, um, Paper Mario game and I think it's surprising to me I think this is a pretty good game and I mean I haven't beaten this game just yet I think I'm more like halfway through the game when I think about it and I think this game is pretty darn good um, I know there's a lot of mixed opinions about this game uh, I know it's mostly just because there's not enough action and the gameplay is all over the place and seriously me trying to explain the gameplay on this is like like it's 2D at one point and it's 3D at one point, then you solve puzzles and next thing you know you fight a boss. It's it's a really weird game, but I think it's I think it's pretty fun to play. I mean, of course this is a game I can I don't I don't know. Like I think this is like a one time game I can only see myself playing. Then maybe like 20 years from now if I really care enough to to play this game again. But I don't know. I I am enjoying whatever I, the time I have with this game and. I actually very much enjoy it, and I'm actually happy that I did purchase this game. Um, hopefully, um, this, uh, the ending to this game is pretty darn good, because the story is really interesting to me right now. And, and yeah. We're going to start with my only PS2 game on this list here, and that is Resident Evil Dead Aim. So, of course, for anybody who may not know, I am a huge Resident Evil fan, and I'm trying to get all the Resident Evil games that I haven't owned in my collection yet, and this is one of the many games that's coming into my collection. And I don't I first when I bought this game, I didn't knew I didn't really know what to really expect. I don't know if I was going to like it or not like it. Um it's a very mixed game of opinion, but I'm going to tell you right now is that I like this game it's a pretty darn good game in my opinion and the reason one of the biggest reasons for one thing it's actually reminds me of resident evil and what i mean by that it reminds it's it has a creepy atmosphere you're on a ship and and honestly i think this game has a better ship design for a resident evil game than i feel with like resident evil revelations one and not only that though but there's also zombies I mean, that's what I always thought Resident Evil was, was all about zombies, you know? Um, the gameplay is really weird. I don't know how do I really describe it, but it's basically a behind-the-shoulder slash first-person shooting game. And technically, you need a, a, a different controller called the GunCon 2, I believe. And what it utilizes is supposed to shoot on TV, which is why it's called Resident Evil Dead Aim. And I don't, I didn't use the Deadcon 2 because it doesn't support flat screen TV from what I research. And the controller does a pretty darn um, okay job. The controls are a little weird, but I actually somehow grew to end up getting used to it. Um, some of the things I do think that are bad about this game is the voice acting. And that's 
honestly like one of the big problems with the game is the first of all the subtitles that goes along with the game does not match which is awful by the way and and it doesn't help either that i can barely hear the voice acting and i'm not even kidding like this the music in the game is a little too loud and the voice is just not only that the voice acting is not that good but the it does the, the dialogue doesn't even match up to the game which is pretty darn terrible but yeah though um besides um that problem in particular um it's a very short resident evil game it only took me like not even kenny like less than three hours to beat this game but i think it's fine for what it is um i think for like over 20 bucks it is a bit of a, a little much for this game but overall i thought the game was pretty darn decent so definitely check it out if you haven't played it already oh another resident evil hero game back to back and that is resident evil revelations 2 for the ps4 and this i mean if you haven't seen my last two pickup videos before i think i did i bought revelations 1 and i thought that game was pretty good um there are some things about that game that i didn't really like about it but overall the gameplay was really fun and i thought it was a pretty decent game for what the price was um revelations 2 um was is pretty much no exception to that i thought this game was pretty good um they improved on the the game improves over the first one just a little bit um not super much like if i was to like rate the score maybe like revelation one would be like a 7.5 out of 10 and this game would probably be like a 7 point like 8 out of 10 like seriously it's not much like better i guess you can say um the only reason why i like about this game um over the first one is for one thing claire's back of course it's not the same voice actor as the one that i prefer um it's cool to see barry get into the action again i think the last game he had was um resident evil gaiden or gaiden on the game boy color and man that game is well anyways so what i think about this game it plays a lot like the first revelations um of course there are a bit of a changes it's still an over the shoulder view of a resident evil game um it this time around they actually have more puzzles to do in this game i believe and the areas are a lot bigger um chapter wise um chapters are a lot longer than the first game and there's also a two-player mode in this game, unlike the first one. Um, the two-player um, side of the game is a little weird. I mean, I didn't play two players in this game, but you can actually switch different characters. And one character can shoot a gun. So, like, for example, you can play as Claire, and there is her other partner that she has. I don't remember her name. It's been some time since I played this game. But her other partner finds items and stuff like that i don't know it's a really weird idea for a game and let alone a resident evil game but i thought this game was pretty um good overall i mean i don't think this game was was excellent mind you um i will say one thing is that the story in this game is way more interesting than the first game i feel like and yeah for 20 bucks um i think it was not a bad deal for this game uh definitely I can definitely definitively say for the Revelation series, if there was ever to be a third one, I thought they were a pretty good series overall. Um, definitely not no amazing games, mind you, but I definitely recommend this if you haven't. All right, we're going to start with really one of my favorite games that I've been playing, and that was Assassin's Creed Origins. Of course, it's one of the more popular games that came out, and this was a game I was actually anticipating a little bit. Well... First of all, I want to say is I'm not the biggest Assassin's Creed fan. As a matter of fact, I don't consider myself one. <laughs> um, the last Assassin's Creed game that I played was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and I could not get into it. But that was a long time ago. That was back when I was a Call of Duty fanboy, and that's all I ever played. And I talked trash to a lot of uh, games. And proof of it is you can actually go look at my older videos. I swear I talk trash to a lot of games. And um, I no longer own Brotherhood anymore. So, but when I saw this game in particular, Assassin's Creed Origins, this game looked freaking interesting. It takes place in Egypt, and that itself alone was its like my one big reason to why I'd want to play this game. But I put over 60 hours into this game, and there is a lot of things to do. Um, I don't think the gameplay, of course, it's not amazing, amazing. Um, I think the biggest thing that I believe the biggest side to why I like this game a lot is the atmosphere it's great the graphics look beautiful even on a 720p um, tv i have and 
and I it's just really what the atmosphere what really caught on to this game for me and the combat system is fun um, I do like having different types of weapons I like using swords the most in this game and I like to use spears as well um, the stealth thing in this game is also fun and satisfying to do um, I will say about this game it does get repetitive after a while because you're going to be doing the same thing all all the time and that's really what dried me out towards the end of the game like seriously like I won't like by the time I was like 50 hours into the game I was just like all right I'm ready for this game to end but but nonetheless this was a great game the story is is very cool I had a lot of fun playing this game and if you haven't played this game and you want to get into the Assassin's Creed games this is not a bad game to start off with I put a blast into this game oh boy I don't know if I really want to talk about this game but I might as well um, bio Phoenix this is for you I guess but we somehow got the same game and the same game pickups video but do I really need to say it? I mean, Oni-chan, I mean, the, the cover speaks for itself. I mean, so why did I buy this game? Well, I was at uh, GameStop, and I was thinking to myself, like, this game... I was literally at GameStop looking at this cover for, like, like a good five minutes, and I just, like, what kind of game is this? And I don't know what I was getting myself into and what's and the only weird thing about this game like i have to say this right now it's funny because it says it's a playstation exclusive right there and forgive me for that tag right there i try to rip that off but it says it's exclusive but then i do research it's not exclusive um i guess at one point it was but my god dude i gotta show you this like like look at this this is what it came with the game look at this the banana split limited edition what the actual <laughs> so i tried putting this in it's already been used so there was no way i was going to get that costume okay what okay so let's just get into this all right so you're basically playing as chicks who fights zombies enemies i some sort of enemy type and you're playing as hot quote unquote anime chicks who fight zombies and the most like not revealing outfits out there but definitely the definitely on the sensor side this is definitely a rated m game right now <laughs> um i i literally only played two levels of this guys um i don't i went into this game with solo expectations and i don't know what to really say about this game it's it just makes me baffle why I even bought this in the first place. In the like, I kind of regret buying this game, but who? But I thought the gameplay was decent. Um, I just I don't think it's amazing, but for what it was trying to be, it's weird. Like I have nothing to say about this game, honestly. It's I played two levels of it. I can't get into it. The story is weird to myself, and I just couldn't get over the fact that these women are wearing all these ridiculous ridiculous costumes and yeah it might be up there to be one of my worst games out <laughs> so the next game i got here is this is a game that i been meaning to get for some time but i just haven't got around to getting it and i thought it was finally sort of time to get it and that is bloodborne now for a little brief history for now, I am a big Dark Souls fan. I love the first game. It, of course, that was the game that got me into the series. Two was pretty good. Um, of course, um, there was definitely not as good as the first game. And I played Dark Souls 3, which is a really good Dark Souls game. So yeah, I'm a big Dark Souls fan. And when I first heard about Bloodborne, I seriously thought it was just some company that was just stealing the idea of dark souls so it put me not a negative way but it made me think of bloodborne as just stealing the idea of dark souls at first but it turns to find out it's the same people who made dark souls software and and i just never got around to getting it i don't know the atmosphere in the game and the id behind it just didn't seem to grapple me like how does dark soul does i'm more of a medieval person that i, that I am like a fantasy gothic medieval time kind of person but this was a game i was definitely was wanting to try out and 
I haven't beaten this game yet, by the way. And I'm going to say right now, it's not a bad game. I think it's a pretty darn good one. And it's really weird to think that that this game is exclusive to PlayStation. And I don't know, it's just weird to me because you got a game like Dark Souls that's basically like Bloodborne, I guess you could say. But I don't know, it's just the idea behind it is just weird. But if you haven't heard of Bloodborne, which I don't know how you don't, it's it's a very, it's technically they call it one of the hardest games on PlayStation. And it definitely got that title from Dark Souls 1. I thought Dark Souls 1 was a very hard game when it came out. But once you get the uh, hang of the game, it was a pretty, it's a pretty, I mean, it's still a challenging game, but it definitely is not the hardest game out there. I mean, you want to talk about a hard game, freaking play one of the Super NES games. <laughs> but, but yeah, the Bloodborne, um, you just explore this really fascinating world and you just fight very cool looking monsters. And I got to give this game credit is that I really like the, the, I only play like three four bosses right now up to this point and they have all been cool looking designs for bosses and i love the armor looking in this game it's more of a very what would i say a british look of a game and the weapons are very interesting i do like the gunplay in this game a lot i think it's a lot more cooler um it's easy to get parries in this game than i think it does in dark souls but i don't know it's really hard to explain this game without knowing the dark souls like gameplay itself but of course if you haven't played this game this is a very fun game if you don't have a playstation 4 if you plan on getting one definitely recommend it so my final game for this pickups video is a technically i guess you could say it's a christmas present of a game i got and the only re well the only reason why i say that's because i paid one dollar for it out of my own pocket but that is white day and this was a game i been wanting to get when it first came out i when before even the game was even released i heard it was coming to ps4 and i thought the game looked very interesting and you know as a big horror fan i wanted to get this game but i think due to like i think i was tight on money that time but i can't remember why i didn't buy day one but finally got it here for christmas and i just beat it today and basically um it's a first person horror game and it takes place in a school and you're just it's mostly a solving puzzle kind of game um i wouldn't recommend this game for the people out there who does not like puzzle because there's a lot of it and i'm going to tell you right now i got my ass handed to me for this game and that's saying a lot because you know when you play a lot of horror games you're expecting a lot of puzzles but this game seriously dude there's a lot of note reading you have to do and it took me a while to beat this game without guides, and seriously, and I was honestly surprised how cool this game was. Um, and for anybody who may not know, it's a game that came out in the year 2000 in Korea, and it was technically supposed to be like one of the scariest games for its time. And and the thing about this game is, I don't think the game is technically really scary scary. Um, the game really heavily relies on the jump scares, and Honestly enough, I will say is that I definitely got scared by this game a couple of times. Um, they got me very good at many points of the game. Um, but after the jump scares, you start to get used to where how they're popped up, and you start to get a, a general idea. And overall, I don't. I do like the atmosphere. I like the idea of it takes place in a school. And but I think one of the biggest things why I liked about this game was definitely the story. I think the story definitely drove me to, to what maybe want to play this game um there's surprisingly i heard that there's like over like eight endings in this game you can get and i only gotten two of them and there's a lot of dialogue choices you can choose from and i guess there's a lot of collectibles to get in this game and i don't know i i ended up liking this game a whole lot more um i don't think i will play this game like over and over again like like a bunch of times to get the endings but i can definitely see myself coming back to this game like two years from now and hell maybe even when i'm like 60 years old and i want to play this game and this is a really cool game um but i think for 25 to 30 bucks for this game i definitely think that's asking for a bit i mean like i said i basically got this game for christmas and i only paid like a dollar out of it but yeah though very cool game and that will be it from my pickups video um sorry if this video has been a little bit over all over the place um 
I have been getting very rusty on my on my videos. I feel like as the time goes on, and forgive me if you hear that in the background, somebody's vacuuming my living room. But yeah, I'm really hoping to make more videos this year. Um, I just want to say is thank you guys for watching my videos. Um, I know I have not been commenting any of you guys on my comments, but I'm hoping that would change somehow this year. And I hope you guys have a good day and hope to see you guys on my next video. So take care.